So recently I made a video on PMI testing, PMI positive material identification machine. So on that video I got a good comment from Mr. Sandeep saying that this PMI machine is capable of uh, like measuring the carbon content or the, it is suitable for the carbon steel or not. So hey guys welcome back to the another video of Ingenious Academy and in this video we are going to talk about the the PMI machine, its terminology, its uh, how it, how does it work and can it identify you know the lighter elements like the carbon, phosphorus or other you know light elements which is having the atomic number is very less. So hey guys watch my video till the end and uh, if you are new to my channel please do subscribe to my educational channel and <clears throat> hit the bell icon so whenever I upload a new video you will get a notification, instant notification. So guys let's begin with our today's topic and let's roll out the intro. As we all know the steel is an alloy of different varying elements such as the major constituent is the chromium and the nickel as the percentage of the chromium and the nickel changes the you know the type or the grade of the steel gets changed so guys it is very essential to measure those constituents though the, the concentration of those alloying elements so guys that's why the PMI machine is there the, this PMI machine is the positive material identification handheld machine or we can call it as a handheld XRF gun. This gun gives us the result and shows us the percentage of percentage concentration of this alloying elements. This PMI guns works on the principle of this XRF principle which is known as the X-ray fluorescence principle. So guys basically inside a PMI machine there is a source of X-rays which produces this X-rays and this X-rays gets you know went inside the specimen or the workpiece and the workpiece emits the another output signal and that particular output signal is measured or it is received by the receiver inside the PMI gun and then the intensity of the receiving signal is then uh, comprises with the other like the modules present in the PMI machine and that's how the particular the intensity or the particular the percentage of the alloying elements gets measured so this handheld uh, handheld PMI machine which is inside the PMI machine there is a like the source which emits the x-rays and so this x-ray coming from the gun it hits the electron and the electron gets dispersed from the inner uh, inner orbit to the outermost orbit so guys whenever the x-ray hits a particular electron the electron gets dispersed and simultaneously there is a vacancy gets created and the, that particular vacancy is gets fulfilled by the you know the adjacent orbit as you can see over here this is the particular image which represents the how the vacancy gets filled due to uh, from the other adjacent so due to that vacancy creation and the vacancy filling a certain amount of energy gets released inside the material and that mat energy uh, that particular energy gets propagated back to the receiver which is there inside the your XRF gun so guys over here the important characteristics is the energy that particular electron gets dispersed and that dis due to that dispersion a certain amount of energy gets released and that particular energy which is known as the fluorescence energy so that's why this particular technology is named as the x-ray fluorescence x-ray is coming inside the particular electron inside the particular electron electron gets dispersed and the fluorescence gets released so that's why this is known as the xrf x-ray fluorescence energy so guys in the case of steel the steel is having the different composition such as the steel is having the percentage of the chromium nickel molybdenum so as we go as we see the structure the chromium is having the atomic number of 24 the nickel is having of atomic number of 28 and the molybdenum is having the atomic number of 42 so if we see the over here this is the total structure like how the chromium it's the inner shell outer shell and the last one other outermost shell so as we can see over here there are the sufficient number of electrons present in the chromium nickel and molybdenum like if there is any vacancy gets created due to the due to the heating of the x-ray inside the particular chromium uh, electron inside the particular chromium element so there are sufficient number of the electrons present in the chromium shell 
as the atomic number is very much on the higher side. So guys, but in certain cases, the PMR machine is not capable to identify the lighter elements such as the carbon or else the phosphorus. In the case of carbon, the atomic number is 6. There are the two electrons in the uh, inner, inner orbit and uh, four electrons in the outermost orbit. So guys, whenever the, you know, the X-rays hits the uh, carbon electron, hits the carbon atom, you know, the atom, uh, the, the electrons, electronic position gets changed and that particular uh, output, like the, that particular the energy gets emitted due to the dispersion of the electron from its, like the, from its original position to the different position. That particular energy release, which is not sufficient to go back to the receiver and to measure the intensity. So that particular uh, energy is not sufficient over here in this case of carbon. So that's why you know the carbon becomes very much you know the PMR machine cannot be able to detect the percentage of carbon. It won't be able to detect the percentage of the phosphorus as well. So guys there are the sum of the you know there are the sum of the lighter elements and the PMI or the handled PMI machine is not you know is not capable of you know identifying this particular lighter elements guys over here in this topic we have seen the how the pmi machine actually works and why the pmi machine is not you know not uh, able to uh, identify the lighter elements so guys i hope you understood the today's topic and in the case of queries guys please do comment and if you like my video please hit like and share all my videos to the, the social networks so guys thank you for watching my video please subscribe to my educational channel engineers academy